Welcome to Austin, Texas. Lee and Joe Tamale, Texas Swimming Center. Day number three of the 2022 Texas Diving Invitational. Two events coming your way, beginning with the women's one meter final. Here's the diving order. There were 26 entrants this morning, whittled down to eight. The scores do not carry over. They dive from reverse to first. Three Texas Longhorns in there. So we begin with the junior from Kahana, Ohio, Jordan Skilkin. She did not qualify into the final on three meters. So I'm excited to see her for the first time in this competition. See what she's at. One meter is typically a stronger springboard event for Jordan. So we'll see what she's able to do. She's going to be starting with an inward one and a half pike. So all of these athletes can choose what order they want to do their dives in. They have to compete six dives that cover all five different groups and directions, inward being one of them. So she chooses to start here with her inward one and a half. Five of the eight competitors will begin their competition with this 403B. What do you think of skill kids? You know what? If that's what my inward one and a half looked like, I'd start with it too just to get off on a good note. That was really terrific. Like I said in the open too, you're gonna see these athletes all doing for the most part the same dives. So the little, little details matter more down here on one meter than they maybe do on three meter or 10 meter. The diver who's maybe six inches higher off of the springboard uh, points their toes, that little extra splash all makes a really big difference here. Three 7.5s, a solid score based on what we've seen from the judges across the course of the week thus far. So our joy. Ayazi, who we have seen compete twice. Starting off with her easiest dive, if you look at her degree of difficulty, a front twister. This is a front one and a half with a full twist. Later on throughout the competition, actually the next round, you're going to see her add an entire twist to this. So kind of kicking things off with a dive she's very comfortable with. Really solid here. Maybe, if anything, I'd love to see it come a couple inches closer to the diving board, which would give her more height as well. Scores in from the five judges. So now back to five judges, which we had lost two last night as it was whittled down. Just three teams had athletes competing. Maria Papworth Burrell hails from Great Britain. Another 403B coming. And now it can help or hurt having these dives back to back with other athletes competing similar ones. Now the judges have a frame of reference. And where they're gonna see a little bit of a deduction here on this one is when she hits the water, her body twists a little bit. So you wanna make sure you're keeping your body perfectly square when you're hitting the water. And instead, you'll see here on this replay, she's hitting the water, boom. She twists a little, you can see both legs from this angle and that creates maybe like a half a point deduction or so from the judges. Indeed, C37s to 7.5s, the low and the top score added together, then multiplied by the DD that gives you a total of 51.60. So a delta of 3.4 between Skilkin and Burrell as Cheryl Pelicani, one of those Olympians, dove in the Olympics for her native country of Italy. She's in with her first dive, what do you think? Now this is again a very easy dive for Pelicani. Her dives get more difficult as the competition goes on. And here where she's going to benefit from the judge and what they like to see is the height and power that she's getting off of the diving boards. Rewarded there with sevens across the board, one seven and a half. 46.20 will be the cumulative for Pelicani. First time seeing Jocelyn Oakley from Texas A&M. Up in Mooresville, North Carolina. I spoke to her coach, Jay LaRue, before this event, and he laughed. He said he finally got one instead of coming to Texas, came to Texas A&M. It's really tough to recruit a lot of athletes uh, in the United States that want to come to a Texas school, he said. Uh, he's really excited. They've, got, they've really improved their facilities, improved their dry land facilities, and you can see it in some of the quality diving out of Texas A&M. Beautiful pike position in the air. You want to see perfectly straight legs, you want to see their chest and body folded onto those legs like that. Judges loved it as well. Two sevens, a 7.5, 51.60. Oh, that ties Burrell. 403Bs thus far. Looking good, scoring good. That will be the dive for Haley Hernandez, an Olympian, Big 12 champion in this event.
third at NCAA Zone D's, fourth at NCAA's, the highest finisher in this competition at NCAA's. What do you think of her? I mean, it's a beautiful dive. That entry can't get any better. So what you want to make sure is you have as little splash as possible. But what she did do is kind of push that dive a little bit further away from the diving board. On her takeoff, her body and her chest is leaning back a little too far. You need to bring that in a couple inches to see some bigger scores. Three sevens, 50.40. With a young diver the University of Texas. Teammate Bridget O'Neill. She finished third at the Big 12 Championships and second, so besting Haley at NCAA Zone D's. Did go on to dive at NCAA's. Did not get out of the preliminary round. Her first dive is in. Oh, what a start for Bridget O'Neill as well. This is the first front two and a half pike we've seen. Degree of difficulty is a 2.6, which is also higher than what we've seen from a lot of athletes so far in round one. So that will bode well for her. She gets some really excellent height off of the diving board. Splash was a little bit more than I expect to see from Bridget when she lands uh, perfectly vertical like that. In terms of a, a way to start off this event, though, really great start to kind of settle in. Reflected, great start as well, 55.90 with the two sevens and the 7.5 to put her atop the leaderboard. Final dive of round number one, Delaney Schnell. Olympian as well, silver medalist in the synchro platform. She did finish fifth at NCAAs, just behind Hernandez last year, the Pac-12 champion in this event. And what do you know, another inward one and a half bike. <laughs> like I said, a lot of the same dives, so these small minor details really matter to the judges. So who did it best? You know what? Her, you know, that and Jordan Skilkin, I think, were my favorite inward one and a half pipes. In this case, she gets a little bit more height off the diving board. Really beautiful pipes. Look at that toe point. Like, just little things like that are so beautiful and graceful in the air, in addition to the power and strength that she has in her diving. Kat, you have a very tricky eye because the scores for Delaney Schnell exactly identical to that of Jordan Skilkin. <laughs> 54 for both of them, so the leaderboard after one round of diving, O'Neill atop, and Skilkin, Schnell, Burrell, Oakley, Haley Hernandez, but the difference, just 5.5 points between 8th and 1st. I mean, you almost might as well start at 0 at this point. Like, that is such a tight, tight margin for diving that there's still plenty of room in these next five rounds. And you'd made mention of it. Generally, in this, we see the same six dives from all the divers. It's just what order that they dive them in. It gives us great ability, frame of reference to compare. Is this is a 203B. See this three times in round number two. Excellent 203B. Sometimes a lot of these addicts can have a hard time controlling the entry and making sure when they hit the water, they want to make sure they're hitting the water perfectly straight up and down. So when I say vertical, that's what I mean, straight up and down. Little bit of an arch there, which is super common on this dive and something that, that you'll see from a lot of the athletes, but she's able to pull her knees under the water to try to reduce that splash. Saw her looking over at her head coach, Matt Scoggin. What's that feedback that she's getting from coach? And then how, as an athlete, do you process that moving forward? You know what, I, I think in all instances, a lot of the things he focuses on is gonna be the takeoff, it's gonna be the position in the air, how she kind of came out of the dive and reached for the water is what dictates that entry a lot of times. So just kind of giving her some feedback on what it looked like, you wanna bank that and, and get ready for your next dive, quite honestly. Yazzie's second dive, 51-34-D is her head coach Dwight Dumay looks on. And this is where I said she was gonna be doing the same dive as round one, but adding an entire twist here. So right here you have two full twists reaches for the water, just doesn't quite get her body tight enough when she hits the water to have a great entry. A little bit of a splash there. Uh, I think if she cleans that up, you could see much bigger scores. Two 5.5s and a 644.20. Competitors do have the benefit of monitors you will see around the pool deck as well, so they can watch the replay. We've seen it sometimes with iPads. They can get that instantaneous feedback, just like when you competed. Mm-hmm. Except mine was called TiVo, and you needed a remote for, for Coach Coggin to rewind it. That's better than saying but the VCR. But thank you for aging me. I appreciate <laughs> that. A VCR. Thank you, yeah. Rick. <laughs> or I have to go over to the handheld <laughs> exactly. camera. Camcorder. Exactly. No, the technology now is just so helpful to be able to see those dives in real time. 
probably why we see such impressive dives from athletes like this. A front two and a half pike. Same thing we saw from Bridget O'Neill in the first round. A little bit, little bit better, though. I think what we saw there was a better position in the air for a pike. And, then that, and that's where the judges were scoring a little bit, a half a score more or so. Burrell all 7.5s. I'm sure there were a difference, though, for these divers having grown up in that digital generation, but sometimes analysis, paralysis, that if you're seeing there, getting that constant feedback, sometimes it's got to just be getting up there and diving, right? That's true, and sometimes it's nice to see w what you need to correct and what you need to fix, but at the same time, I don't know, I don't know if I always need to see all of my dives. <laughs> Would have been nice to probably pass on a couple of them. Pelicani's 203B, the same dive from Skilkin. Oh, see right here, what I want to highlight on this dive, because Chiara Pelicani does it so beautifully, is her knee save which is when she hits the water, you see right as her knees are going under the water, she bends them and is able to kind of pull her legs under the water a little bit faster right there. You see her kind of pull that under the water and that helps with reducing the splash and improving that entry. Tricks of the trade, right? Yep, like I said, it's the little details and she really excels at things like that. Two 6.5s and a seven puts her at 92.20. Halfway through round number two, six rounds of diving to crown a champion. Oakley with a 105B over two and a half somersault pike. Ooh, tough hurdle there. You see her in the top right corner of the diving board, which isn't ideal. Does maintain control of the dive though, right there, corner a couple inches back. Doesn't seem to let it phase her too much. Still gets into a nice tight pike position, but might have been able to kind of keep control of that entry and not over-rotate it a little bit had she had a better hurdle. Two six and a halfs into seven, so the majority thus far, the competitors staying in that six and a half to seven for their dives that have been well executed. Haley Hernandez was trailing by 5.5 points after round number one, but yeah. We made up for the most accomplished competitor in this event. What do you think oh, for a second that's dive? beautiful. She's a little bit forward at the end of the diving board. Kind of takes that front two and a half a little bit further out into the pool than she should. You see there, she's just leaning a little forward. Maybe would have liked to see it a few inches closer to the diving board. And in doing so, she'd be able to kind of control her speed and control the momentum as she's hitting the water and not let it wash over past, uh, past vertical a bit. <laughs> Six two six point five forty nine point four zero. Bridget O'Neill was the leader after the first round of diving. She had the hardest dive in B wise. We'll follow that up with a two oh three B. And that balances out because now you have her coming in with round two with the lowest degree of difficulty. Again, the DD is very similar, it's just a matter of what order you're gonna see it in. I really like this dive. What I'd like to see maybe is some toe points, some smaller minor things here and there that could kind of elevate it from that six and a half, seven range to that seven and a half, eight range. Her toes look a little sloppy there in the air. Uh, maybe her knees or legs separate a bit. And again, these are really small things, but they can add up in terms of the overall impression of the dive. 46 even puts her at a 101.90. And to your point, Hernandez and O'Neill They've competed the same two dives, just in different rounds, and the difference is very tiny. Couple of points between the two. Snell will close out round number two. Same dive as Hernandez, same dive that O'Neill began the competition with. Here. Shot her up the leaderboard, so an opportunity for Snell. Her second dive. the difference in that dive except for just all around there's so much more power about a foot more height than you saw from anybody else her knees are perfectly straight in that pike toes perfectly pointed when we talk about the small things Delaney Schnell always covers the small things and that is what makes a difference in her diving it makes a difference judges saw it couple of eights on the board now that puts her at 115.1 
Welcome back to the women's one meter final here at the Lee and Joe Jamel Texas Swimming Center. Already two rounds of diving, eight dives. Each of the competitors in this final mentioned 26 that entered across these seven teams that are here, including the host University of Texas at Austin. Jordan Skilkin, fifth place after her two dives. Kickoff round number three with a reverse one and a half somersault pike. because she's really confident on the end of this board. You see her knee save, pull that water underneath for a really clean entry, keeping sevens from the judges, just dropping that one seven and a half. 50.40. Yeah. Yazi forward two and a half somersault pike. Unfortunately, just doesn't get that speed off of the diving board to complete this dive. It looked like her rhythm on the board was a little bit off. Really needed to get more out of it, but her timing was off, so she never really got into a great pike and rotation. So right here, she's hitting the water, just doesn't land straight up and down, and this sort of under-rotation is going to be a drastic deduction from the judges. Reflected four, four and a half, four and a half. For Ayazi. Maria Papworth Burrell. A back one and a half somersault pike, DD of 2.3. Unfortunately, that was the that was a really great top to the dive of called what's happening in the air basically as the top and then the bottom is what's happening when she hits the water. Really good looking top, perfect distance, just doesn't quite have her timing right. A little maybe a little too quick, a little adrenaline with a final going on, like very excited, but can't control that dive and lets it over rotate. Three five and a half to put her at one forty eight point oh five. Pelicani will dive next, showed you the Olympic rings, mentioned she had dove in the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Teammate was Elena Bertocci. They, drove, they dove, excuse me, in the synchronized springboard. I'm sure they drove to an event at some point, but they dove in the event in Tokyo, and she's in with her third dive. Oh man, this is absolutely beautiful. She is more dynamic, I think, than anybody else you'll see in this event. She's so quick in the air. So much height. She really is patient on that diving board so she can get every inch out of it. It's just that speed. I love seeing that kind of, but she doesn't hold back. A lot of speed and is able to control it as well. 37.5 is very distinguished at the European level as well. Five golds at the European Championships. Team events. She had a gold medal in 2022 in Rome in the three-meter springboard. A bronze in 2020. Budapest, one meter as well for Pelicani. Oakley, up at the 203B, same dive as Burrell. Oh, and executed much better than what we saw from Burrell. In this case, great distance from the diving board as well, but sees that cue, that, that spot or visual spot that she needs to see in order to time that entry as well. Haley Hernandez diving runs in the family for the young competitor already well accomplished during her time at the University of Texas. Two brothers, Nathaniel and Zachary. Nathaniel, and the diver. Got me into the sport, and I started following along in his footsteps when I was only seven years old, and I just fell in love with the sport, flying, and it really just kind of took off from there. There is the picture with. Brother Nathaniel, that's how she began diving at seven years old. Parents Richard and Teresa Hernandez hails from South Lake, Texas, went to Carroll High School. The 2020 Olympian in the three meter event. Oh, and it's dives like that that show why, why she probably is an Olympian. Just so solid and consistent. I don't think I ever really see Haley 
extremely over rotate or under rotate. Like she's so consistent in her dives. Mostly sevens, two six and a halves as well. Just some little things she could probably clean up, like a tighter pike in the air, but really great back one and a half. Already a two time All American. The one and the three for a 10 time U.S. Junior National Champion. Schnell will dive after Bridget O'Neill. 403B to come, DD of 2.4. Oh, absolutely perfect entry into the water. The only thing I see here that we need to highlight is that slight twist that she had when she hit the water. There's no splash to highlight. That was perfect. The distance is absolutely perfect. Great pike, but right here you see her legs twist a little bit as she's hitting the water. Be a minor deduction. 7.5 and the seven thrown out, so all seven and a halves for an even 54 for her. 155.90. Current leader. After two rounds of diving, this will take us to the halfway mark. 203B for Schnell. Delaney Schnell cannot quite control that entry and she's frustrated about it. That's not not a common occurrence from a veteran. A ton of power and speed, a lot of height off of that diving board, but when she reaches for the water, she reaches a little too hard, really pulls her chest as she's reaching for the water instead of kind of using the right technique and being patient. Even a four and a half from one judge, five and a half, five, six held on to, and that leaves the door open for Bridget O'Neill to jump into the lead after three rounds of diving. For Schnell that had a five point advantage after round number two, but now the leaderboard condensed. Worth noting though that, I mean, that is still not a very big variance in that leaderboard. You're looking at what, seven points in the top six divers. That's still really close with three more rounds. Yeah, even going down to Hernandez, who's in seventh at a 146.95. Gee, within striking distance, under 10 points away. Back to the top of the order, Skilkin. Begin round four, 52-33D, DD of 2.5. Oh, good looking dive. A little bit leaned back on her takeoff. So for this, you want to make sure you're getting all your strength off the board because there's a lot to happen. You're doing a back one and a half with one and a half twist. You got a lot to get done in one meter, but she sort of leans it back a little bit and pushes it back into the middle of the pool. Maybe needs to bring it in about six inches or so closer to the diving board to see, to see bigger scores. Two 6.5s and a six for the senior, three-time All-American. Did it twice on platform thus far in 2020 and 2022. So I figured to see her in that competition tomorrow as a Yazzie, a 403B. Really terrific 403B. Maybe from some of the other divers, we've seen a little bit more height in this dive, but the distance is perfect. She's standing up over her toes. Nobody nobody wants to be too close to the diving board on an inward. You really have to be patient and willing to stand up over your toes. Seven, seven and a half, seven and a half. Probably her best dive so far of the Let's go back for a second with Skilkin, so accomplished in the platform, two time Big Twelve champion. That's the event that we'll see tomorrow. What's the difference? Obviously there are tons between a platform diver that specializes or accomplishes there versus a one meter or three meter. Um, you know what? It's just, it's a completely different skill set. Diving on a springboard requires so much timing and patience with the diving board that you don't necessarily have on platform. Platform is a little bit more your, your raw strength. You're not trying to time anything in order to get any height off of it. Both one meter and platform though, you know what? Strength and power is really important. One meter, you don't have much time to get this done. So the stronger the diver, the more dynamic the diver, the better. Platform is pretty similar in that. So it's not uncommon to see some crossover between some really talented 10 meter divers and have them also excel on the one meter. Similar to Delaney Schnell, 
You know what, the coach at LSU, Drew Livingston, was historically a really amazing 10-meter diver. He's also an NCAA champion in the one-meter. So it really can be something that both, both sports or both, sorry, both events can be um, a, a great thing for them to excel at. Pelicani, a 303B, same dive as we just saw from Burrell. Wow, she's really stepping up in round three and four. Her teammates, they're really impressed by this. There is no chance anybody else in this competition gets this kind of height off of the diving board. She, look how far above the three meters she is from this angle. And to have that kind of power and height and still be able to control the dive and land perfectly straight in the way that she does is incredibly impressive. Two sevens and a 7.5, 51.6. So, she you see Drew Livingston? Coach for LSU over there registering in the scores. And why those scores so important and being able to dive at the one meter, the three meter, and platform when you go on to NCAAs further into competition. You want to have a diver that can score as many points as possible. Absolutely. Anybody who's that kind of well-rounded diver is just that much more beneficial to the overall swimming and diving team. Um, so look at, honestly, myself, a springboard specialist. I was only as good at two events, but there were some other competitors who were competing in all three and had an opportunity to score way more points for their team. Oakley's 303B. Oh, man. She lost it a little bit here on the hurdle, and that's really tough to come back and nail this dive. Does a great job trying to control it, but just can't quite get that entry. Right here, you see her in that top right corner. Really nice pike position in the air, but ends up probably thinking she's a little bit off. It kind of messes with your timing. When you don't have your hurdle, you don't necessarily know exactly where you are in the air like you should. So maybe she comes out of that dive a little bit late and sort of pulls a little bit hard for the water when she didn't need to because she's just not in the right rhythm. Gives her a 40.80. Obviously, these divers eventually will funnel down and find the one event that they want to specialize in or what they're best at because then they can advance to the Olympics like Haley Hernandez did, but nice to be a well-rounded diver for your team at the NCAA. Absolutely, and that was a really good-looking dive from Haley. Unfortunately, not the entry that she probably wanted to cap off that dive. Looks good in the air, does land it really well, maybe a couple degrees past vertical, but that splash is a bit uncharacteristic for her. Difference as well for somebody like Hernandez, who we've seen excel at the three meter, one meter. How do you have to change your approach? You know what, you really, there isn't too much to change in terms of at the end of the day, that, that hurdle, that takeoff, having the right timing and being patient on the diving board is going to be critical. Um, anybody who is a little bit more speedy and dynamic is going to benefit, though, a little bit more on one meter. Because you have less time. You have less time. So if you're just a quicker, faster diver, you're definitely going to benefit. I mean, that helps you on three meter as well, but it really helps you on one meter. What you think of the 303B from O'Neill? I like it. I think just coming off the diving board, she bends her knees a little bit getting into there, into that pike position. In slow motion, you can see it. In real time, it's not quite as bad. And what I think the judges are going to reward in this case is the height that she gets off the diving board. She was so high in the air on that. O'Neill, one of those divers as well that just looks good in the air. Yes, looks graceful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're rewarding power and speed, but they're rewarding grace as well. It was Snell yesterday after a subpar dive by her standards in round number one that bounced back to have five really good dives 203b that we saw in round three was not her best what does she have here with the 305c oh she ends up changing her dive to a 303b we thought it was going to be a reverse two and a half tag she ends up instead doing a reverse one and a half pike which is typically an easier dive and you know what? It's almost like she overcompensated for her previous round. So in the round before, she did a back one and a half, lost control of it, and over-rotated. It looks like she overcompensated this time. A reverse. Four rounds, so two rounds of diving left. And good news if you're a Texas fan, Jordan Skilkin, you will see her dive another year. Absolutely. diving again next year that'll be my fifth year so I'll be graduating in the spring but then I'll be doing a one-year master's program to continue diving and take that fifth year across 
all the NCAA sports, and I love the student athletes taking advantage of the fact that they had that COVID year, ability to get another year of eligibility to compete, but more importantly, what they do is they finish their degree early and then they can go get a secondary degree. I love it. It's incredible, and I'm just appreciative that they're given that opportunity and that they're all, to your point, taking advantage of it when they can. Yeah, I've had a couple coaches talked to and student athletes as well across the other sports I covered that you have some that they could be going for their doctorate <laughs> because they've been around. If you talk a redshirt year, you have some that are in their seventh years on campus and it's great to see them maximizing their time to not only compete but to walk away with a whole bunch of degrees. And what I like seeing not only the education side of it, but Jordan Skilkin has continued to get better and better every single year. I'm looking forward to seeing what just another year on top of this can do because the progress she has made since she came in as a freshman a few years ago is incredible. Here she did a front two and a half pike, solid. I mean, she's going into this into this round in third place, and that could be enough to kind of keep her in striking distance. Yeah, this one really wide open. We talked about three Olympians coming into this, Schnell and her prowess, but she's left the door open. Bridget O'Neill has been the steadiest reason why she's leading the event as a Yazian with her 203B. Left this one a little bit short. You see her coach there, uh, probably going to give her a little bit of critique in terms of not just on this takeoff and kind of really getting the speed and momentum, but she came out of that pike a hair too early and just didn't quite make it all the way around. Again, you want to be landing perfectly vertical, straight up and down. If you're a few degrees, one direction or the other, that's when the judges start taking taking deductions off. In addition to the fact that you're going to have a bigger splash, if you're not landing perfectly straight in, the splash is going to go with that. Yeah, judges as you're looking for perpendicular. Yes, exactly. And you start that 5, 10, 15 degrees. Burrell, 51-32, deep. Good looking dive, but also a pretty easy dive. Degree of difficulty only a 2.2. Nice looking twist in the air. One of the toughest parts, you want to make sure you're keeping your legs perfectly straight, perfectly together in the twist, which she executes beautifully there. And the judges liked it. Her lowest degree of difficulty across her dive sheet. Three sevens. 46.20 puts her at 241.05. Pelicani was second after the four rounds of diving. This matches her highest degree of difficulty. She threw a 105B in round three. This 53-33D, big opportunity here for Pelicani. And that's a great way to keep her in the running as well. Reverse one and a half with a one and a half twist. One of the tougher dives we see from any of the athletes. And again, this is where her height off of the diving board, which comes from a few things. One, her strength and her power, but also her technique on that hurdle. She's super patient, really balanced at the end of the diving board, and she's able to get every inch out of it. And she was talking some of that entry angle. Yep. Coach afterwards, Oakley. Same dive that we saw from Burrell earlier in the round. It didn't feel like she had the same sort of quick, tight body in that twist. Didn't feel quite as clean. So if you're kind of comparing side to side between hers and Burrell's, I think Burrell's will get a, about a half a point more, and it has to do with that position and tightness in the air. All 6.5s, a 42.90. Okay, so for Hernandez, come in. You have such a great freshman year. Think back to your competition days, and when you come in, what was the difference from freshman to sophomore year? I mean, I think your freshman year, everything is just so new. Like, you're just kind of wide-eyed. Everything is a little bit new, and you, you kind of can float through, and ignorance might be bliss, I, I think. By the time you're coming around your sophomore year, I mean, you, you really have settled in. You know what's going on. Um, you know what the structure is in terms of going to the weight room and, and kind of how your training is going to look when you're going to be tired and fatigued. So I think you just have that much more of an advantage of just knowing what's happening around you to, to better plan and prepare yourself. It used to have a very bright career. Building on that, six and a half, a couple of sevens for Hernandez. Now at 247.05, so she's close to Pelicani. 
She's in the lead. O'Neal was the leader after four. Will she stay that way? Oh, she probably will. She had a bit of a lead, and this is a degree of difficulty of a 2.6 loses control slightly on the entry. This was a really great looking dive in the air. Loved the top of this dive, great twist, just loses her feet. You see them separated and crossed over each other. And then kind of the same when she hits the water, just doesn't have quite the tightness and control over her body and over her legs that she probably needs to, to see maybe a point or so higher from each judge. Still consistency has been so beneficial for O'Neill and so crucial in this event. She's been the most consistent Across her five dives thus far, lots of sixes, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, right in that range. Snell will end round five with a 53-33 D, DD of 2.6. Oh, that was beautiful. Good comeback for her. Her last two rounds have been very frustrating. And right here is at least able to put him behind her and execute one of the better dives we've seen today. We talk about that tight position while you're twisting in the air. You want to keep your legs straight and together. And right there, that's done beautifully. Competes this to an average of just under 54 points in her career. 54.90. So better in a bounce back dive with one round of diving remaining. Everybody chasing O'Neill has a six and a half point gap to Pelicani, Skilkin, and Hernandez, then Schnell, Morrell, one through six. As we go into round six of this women's one meter final. Degree of difficulty will not have a huge impact on this last round. Most of the top four is all looking at a 2.6 degree of difficulty. With the exception of Chiara Pelicani, who's only a 2.4, so she will have to execute that much more. So these are the harder dives that we're going to see in this competition, so potential for more disparity between the scores. Absolutely. Not there, though. Jordan Skilkin really stepping up to the challenge on this one with a beautiful reverse one and a half, one and a half. Teammate Bridget O'Neill is excited for her. You love to see that. The most important thing here is your takeoff, making sure you are straight up and down. You're not leaning forward on this takeoff. If you're leaning forward, that honestly can be the death of the dive. You just will not be able to get the momentum to make that all the way around. Excellent takeoff, excellent entry from Jordan Skilkin. Solid score as well, 53.30. Puts her at 303.20. So that right now will be the mark to best. That leaves her in pretty good position for a podium. Yazi will close out her day with a 303B. Uh, one of her better dives, at least in this case, I think she really had a lot of strength and power behind that dive. And that's where she struggled in some of her other dives. Just didn't quite get the rhythm off of the diving board in order to get in and get the momentum and speed. Here, on the other hand, beautiful hurdle and takeoff. Just doesn't quite know what to do with all of the height that she got, I think. Reaches for the water, little too late, and lets it over-rotate. We'll wrap up with a 254.80 for Zara Joy Ayazi. Borella back, one and a half, somersault, one and a half, twist free. fall into on this dive is that in order to get enough momentum and rotation they lean back she does not do that here really great distance from the diving board good looking twist in the air too a bit of a splash when she hit the water because i don't think she was able to have enough time to really get a good grip on her hand but a dive she should be happy to end with places are at 292.30 here's where it gets interesting pelicani is in second after Five rounds of diving. She needs a 50.20 on this dive to get into first. Her average score is a 51.42. Best she's ever thrown this is to the score of a 54. Oh, that might do it. That's That, I think, is going to be enough to keep her ahead of Jordan Skilkin from the University of Texas. 
Beautiful position in the air. And really her best entry of the evening. Out of all six dives she's done, that is the cleanest entry she's had in terms of just the smallest splash. And it is indeed just enough. Two sevens and a 7.5, 51.6. That nudges her right ahead of Skilkin by 1.4 points. Oakley, finish off with a 51.34 D. she was kind of coming out and reaching for the water. Again, such a minor thing, but in this type of event where we've seen so many divers compete that same dive, judges are looking for the little things. We tell them to solve the codes for diving. It's usually run, <laughs> run you know, upside down, it's legs in the air. There you go. All sevens for Oakley. Hernandez, round out with a reverse, one and a half somersault, one and one half twist free for the Olympian. She needs a 57.55. That she's ever done this is a 70.20. I don't know if that's going to be quite enough, but it really was a terrific dive and a great way for her to end around. She has some really, really consistent diving. Minor things here or there in terms of just cleaning up her entry. Looks like she's having to pull really hard right here, really pulling into that pike position to try to make it all the way around. A little bit more speed and momentum coming off the board. 48.10 to round out the day for Hernandez. 295.15, so currently behind Pelicani, Skilkin, as O'Neill. 45.10, you see she needs two Advance into first place. She competes this to an average of 52.9 in her career. Does she have it? Easily, easily has it. Wow, this was a story of Bridget O'Neill just being so consistent throughout the entire event. She did not miss a single dive. And put on top of that the fact that she gets so much height off of the diving board. Her long legs make the make her twisting position and everything looks so graceful while she's in the air. What an amazing one meter event that we just saw from Bridget O'Neill. O'Neill seals the deal. I'll be at one dive left. Delaney Schnell does have an opportunity. Have to be absolutely stellar scores on this final 52-33 D, DD of 2.5. Yeah, I mean, I think you're looking at you're looking at over 70 points that she would need, which really isn't going to be doable on a back. 70.55. Yeah. Final dive of the competition. Snell will round things off. The women's one meter. Oh man, she really wasn't going to go down without a fight, though. That might be one of the best dives we've seen in this competition. Again. I don't know if it's a 70-point dive because that's so difficult to do. It's only a 2.5 degree of difficulty. However, like I said, she wasn't going to go down without a fight. The most beautiful entry we've for sure seen in this entire event, even in slow motion, it's really hard to see even a drop come out of the water when she gets it. The best she's ever done it scored a 61.88. You see all eights on the board, even 60. That pretty good for Schnell to round things up at the champ. Bridget O'Neill from the University of Texas. Steady all the way through. We will speak with her when we come back. Now the champion for the University of Texas here on their home boards. Bridget O'Neill takes first. Schnell in second. Pelicani in third. To round out the women's one meter. Joined now by Bridget O'Neill. And we were talking, it just seemed like you were so steady across your six rounds of diving. What was your approach for the event today? Oh, thank you. Um, I love competing one meter. Um, I feel really confident in my dives usually um, throughout the season, and I just I love I really like competing one meter, um, especially when all the girls like are competing, um, and everyone you know has relatively similar dives, and so I just like the, you know that competition how it gets closer um, in this event. 
Now you talk about how everybody has such similar dives. So what do you think it is that kind of sets you apart when you're looking at that? And if, if I'm sitting in the judge's seat, what am I looking for then if you're all doing such similar things? Um, I mean, my coaches tell me it's my hurdle um, that I get a lot of more height off the board than um, so many other girls. Um, but other than that, it's just I think whoever's on that day and whoever's most consistent um, can really want to can really run away with it. I mean, really impressive dives. You, your twisters, especially at the end, to round things out. What did you take away from this event, though, that you want to work on as you head into the rest of the season? Um, I definitely think uh, throughout the rest of the season.